What's going on, everybody? The content you are about to consume is from a recently recorded Twitter space. So for this one, it's just going to be audio, no visuals. But going forward, all of the spaces will be uploaded to YouTube with images to match. Find your strategy. 100%, man. Like when when uh, COVID happened and we started to work from home, it, I just had way, way more time. And instead of me like kind of playing video games all the time, which I was, I was back when like Fortnite was popping off and everything like that. And, you know, I was just getting out of college. So I had to like, you know, slowly wean myself off of that lifestyle. But, I, you yeah. know, instead I kind of just placed my energy elsewhere. And at that point, you know, I was like two years into working, you know, not making a lot of money by any means, but I had some money and I said, you know what, like after that big COVID drop, let's go on with a substantial amount of money. Um, yeah. I'm going to hold this for a long term. I, I had no idea how quickly yeah. it was going cover but that actually gave me such a nice jump start that i was able to you know kind of get into it and i had some thank thankfully i had some good people kd being one of them who you know he's younger than i am but he's he'd been in the market for longer than me and he's like yo yeah. like i keep on hearing good things about kd yeah no kd's a good guy man i i've been straight with him i'm very I'm, I'm very flaky and who i follow i don't know why i think it's because it's very hard to you know, in this market, there's a lot of people doing a lot of the same thing. Yeah. And it can get a bit samey. So I'm like, mm, I keep on hearing this person, but they're just talking about the same whole shit. You know what I mean? No, I It's know. nice to come across people like yourself that are like going to talk about your, the journey, you know? Yeah. To no, get... I, I didn't even really plan on doing it, but it's just like, you know, it kind of just goes to mm. show. If you get a couple good good people in your corner. Good people, yeah. Exactly. Me, one of them, like that's that's it's fine. Like you know, I I always like to answer DMs and everything like that because no one did it for me uh, when I was yeah. Young. So, um, but anyways, like you know, Katie, there were a couple others who were like, "Yo, if you don't really learn how to do this shit, you're gonna lose all that money you just made." And yeah, exactly. They, the best they, knowledge, they the best knowledge is investing in yourself, and that's what uh, they don't teach you in school. They don't teach you. Uh, they don't teach you in finance even, unless you're going into that field, you know. No, I mean, I graduated when you start with a yeah. management degree and, you know, I nice. knew terms and everything like that, but I didn't know how to run a business for shit. I mean, like, truly, yeah, exactly. you know, it's like, you know, they'll, they'll give you the textbook, but until you're really in the mix, you don't you don't really know what you're doing. No, it's like a learn on the job kind of thing, isn't it? Yeah, no, exactly. And you learn every day in, the, in this market. I mean, like, you just can't guess it any anymore. I mean, you can look at you can analyze, you can look back at the, the way the market's been playing out for the last 20 years and probably get a good idea of what's happening, you know. Right, yeah. Cu current affairs, current world affairs and everything like that can can be a big part. Yeah. But I think we're in unprecedented times truly. I mean, we we have we have all of this um the issues with inflation. We have a a war that's going on that, you know, seemingly is less talked about um, mm. you know, more and more. We have uh, you know, we're still kind of just rebounding from Yeah, but just you, you, I, th I think sometimes you just have to think of that as noise, right? It's always going to be there, right? There's always going to be something going on. It's just the world we live in. No, oh, you're hundred percent right. And when I'm you're when you're concentrating and you you give yourself one hundred percent into your game plan, there's no there's no uh, there's no losing on that, you know, because you have that you you if you if it's tried and tested, like it's some a strategy that works for you, then it works. Don't deviate, don't deviate away from that. And if you're going to get your capital and put it somewhere else, you want to do the same research you did when you got into options or you got into the stock market, you know? No, you're I think that, yeah, yeah. that's where a lot of traders mess up at is that you have noise. all these, you have all these people and you have all these yeah. people with way more experience and then they're doing this, making money and you're not. So you go start trying to do what they're doing and then it's not making money. You'll so lose money. Crap. You'll lose you money talk, quick. Yeah, and you start talking crap about them, how they are they can't make money. And then you run over here to this guy, and you're like, all right, I'm going to do what he does. I'm going to try his call out, and you lose money, so he's crap. Instead mm. of just taking one thing that you can kind of see and kind of make sense, and then yeah. just chart it every day over and over It's and like over getting into a stock, over, isn't it? It's like finding that stock that nobody's quite aware of or, <laughs> like – it's not popping off yet but you're like you you've done your due diligence uh, or you and, and so you're able to think right okay i'm gonna do a, uh, some options on that or i'm gonna buy some stock in that maybe short term long term de depending on the news whether you want to day trade it or go long you know what i mean does that make sense uh, yeah i mean you you think about this you could buy something i could tell you it's crap 
Oh yeah, one hundred percent. I don't because I don't see it. And then the same, you know, the same for you. I could buy something. You'd be like, man, I can't believe, you know, that you would even mm-hmm. do that. That's kind of like somebody asked me about Tesla when it started tanking. I was like, if it was me, I'd sell if I'm in the green. And then it rebounded up. And he was like, man, I wish I wouldn't have sold. And I said, I didn't tell you yeah. to do what I said. I just said, if it was me, because my emotions, I would sell. When it got down to about 98, I think it got down to its lowest night yet. Was it at $98? I think it, I, I remember calling it at 103. I was like, people, you need to buy calls for Tesla. Like, shit's going to pop. You know what I mean? Because I just, I just had a feeling and I was looking at everything. Man, did it pop like yesterday. It was crazy. It's so hard to predict that type of move, too. I mean, we, we can have, you know. But the- I, it, it, can't, it couldn't go any lower, dude. <laughs> no, I know exactly. I mean, how Fuck. many were bagged at that point down at 109 what was the what was the pre-spit level kevin i know you know it um where the- i think you hit 98 but i might be wrong i know that i was calling it i like 103 <clears throat> man i mean it's just so hard to- it's such a hard thing yeah it's not it, every it, you know everybody is able to do it but if you're able to like have that um like it it depends what stocks you're following right you just have a keener eye you like like th- things just make more sense and to to somebody who says like they're very bearish on it, that's fine. But there's always going to be people on the opposite side, you know. And it can change from day to day, right? Oh, a hundred percent. And I mean, that's one thing that I, I kind of an, another point at least that I wanted to yeah. kind of talk about today was that there's opportunity every single day. I mean, we see it. You know, uh, Timmy the other day ripping like five hundred percenters, like hundred percent is a hundred percent whether you are buying one contract yeah, yeah. and there's opportunities for everyone every single day and sometimes i and i think that's why you win I, some you lose some yeah and i call twitter poison because you're going to get a hundred different <laughs> perspectives you're going to hear a hundred different um you know people on spaces you're going to hear or see a hundred exactly. starts and it's always just going to cloud your own judgment and i mean if look if if exactly. you're confident in yourself and you actually put in the work to you know formulate your own thesis and stuff yeah why are you listening to anybody else i mean that should be the goal for everybody including me you know sometimes yeah, wanna, yeah. ad and i don't agree and i'm like hmm maybe i gotta think a little bit more about but it this. makes you re- it makes you think it makes you analyze what why he's, he has that certain thought on that matter and you're like then you can counter argue that you know what i mean and i just saw there's a really trader on here inspector gadget he was just, he just tweeted a little while ago um you know there's always a bull case and always a bear case and that is 100 percent true and by like yeah, yeah, yeah. saying oh this is going to here by here yeah you know, i mean i got into i got into an argument with a guy last night and, and it, it was like a, it was like a soft argument like it wasn't like we weren't actually going at each other it was just like yeah, yeah. You know, a case of like a bull case difference of opinion yeah yeah, difference of opinion, and like I, I, I was like purposely egging the person on, 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 and I was like telling him, I was like, "Yo, look, I want you to come back at me. Like, I don't want you, I don't want my voice to stand alone. Like, you have a clear difference of opinion. I want us to talk it out. Like, I, I yeah, you want to hear what he's got to say, right? So you, it may, it may change your mind on it, or, it, or not. You know? Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, like, we, you know, what he was saying with, I actually like wholeheartedly agree with. It was just like. Because he was basically saying, you know, this is like arbitrage. And I said, yeah, it is kind of like arbitrage. But, you know, there's different points of looking at it. And, and you know, yeah, we just kind of went back and forth on that. And I was like, you know, is it um, is it good arbitrage? Is it bad? Does it help us as investors? Does it hurt us as investors? And, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I agree with his viewpoints at the end. It was just like, like I, I always look at the thing as like when Mando's talking about it, like iron sharpens iron, bro. Like, you know, me having a difference of opinion should not should not influence you at whatsoever. Like, um, <clears throat> there was a, yeah, yeah, I'll leave it there now. I just spot on with that. I mean, it's it, it is good to have people who you can bounce ideas off of and, and trust in them and their opinion and mm-hmm. things like that. But at the end of the day, I mean it's your money, no one else it's cares. It's all about you, yeah. Yeah, no one cares about you more than you. So it's nice to share, like, you know, I think that's what most I think that's why um you know, a lot of people will like to share their 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 path to success or what they see as an improvement on their knowledge they, they learn, right? 
Yeah. So there's nothing wrong with that, and that's good, and it, it provides a bit of, like, entertainment to the community. Okay, yeah, it might be a bit of a clout thing sometimes, you know. Oh, look, I won out of here, you know. But you have to be prepared to show your losses as well, and I think that's where you, you find the genuine traders and the, you know, the ones that are in it for themselves, you know. Yeah, no, I mean, it's totally okay to be right. You're, you're probably once at least every yeah. single day that you're there. You, you, ha- you have to be more okay with saying – all right, I'm wrong, then. Yeah. All right, I'm right. Let's see where this goes because, you know, especially young new traders, you're going to be wrong way more than you are right. So if you can eliminate losses because you're, oh, I'm wrong. It's not working out. I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah. Then get out instead of saying, well, it'll come back. I think that's a society oh, problem, too. Yeah. So no one wants to be wrong. No one ever wants to, you know, take ownership of their losses. I can think about it. I always you know, retrace sports and all that. But like, think about it. Somebody makes an error in baseball. What's the first thing that? Oh, you know, uh, um, it took a bad hop, or you know, I, I my yeah, they don't, I, they don't own that loss. No, That's just, the well, everybody makes freaking mistakes. I was actually talking about. I I opened a space about two hours ago, and then somebody said, "I can't hear you." So I don't know if you've ever had that issue on uh, spaces, but I was talking about like um, the reasons why day traders or especially new new traders lose money. And there's a lot, there's a ton of reasons, you know? One of the main reasons is though, you have to, like, example is like what you guys were talking about earlier. It's like, yeah, you could follow anybody under the sun that you want. But like, yeah. at the end of the day is like, you have to come, you have to come and realize what strategies, you know, best suit you. Um, exactly, yeah. And that's not going to be the same as like your, you know, like my mentors who taught me, you know, my strategies are completely different than my mentors. Like, you know. Yeah, and you should. And, and it's not necessarily a bad thing, right? It gave me a viewpoint. No, that's a good thing. Yeah, it gave me a viewpoint. And so, like, it goes it goes to me for saying, like, man, I was talking about, like, swing trading is really hard right now. And I agree with him. Swing trading is really hard. But, like, it's kind of, like, the irony in that sense, like, um, swing trading really hard in the traditional finance stock market is really hard right now. For me, I, I'm, I'm pretty diverse across, like, you know, multiple asset classes. And for me, yeah, like, yeah. Swing trading in crypto, I've been fucking murdering. It. Like, you know, I've been buying Ethereum at like, you know, sub 100. You know, I've been buying Ethereum at 1200. The other day it hit like $1,700, 16 It's, you know, still trading about like 15, 1600 bucks. And then it's like, you is, know, it, is, it, is it following Bitcoin? Because I know this is what like it keeps me away from the crypto market. I know there's money to be made, but I, I, you know, when you hear articles or people discussing like it's following like you know if bitcoin's going higher then ethereum's doing better you know that kind of thing i don't that for me is yeah. see, see that for me kind of like i harpen back to what my mentor talking about me uh, talking mm. about me is like a lot of stuff that you hear on a day-to-day basis is white noise you got in, most of it you got to block out like yeah 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 and i think you kind of you know you kind of touched on it too though you're touching on like the fact that like you know, you don't really follow that many people because, you know, you don't want, you know, your, your Twitter page to be or your feed to be, you know, same thing. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. But like the same with me. I mean, I, I purposely keep my numbers down. Not not for like, yeah, I'm trying to. But the problem is when you followed a lot of people at first, it's hard to get that number down. <laughs> you have to oh. like just weed them out. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I've dude, I've definitely done it. Like, dude, I've weeded out crypto accounts that I don't really like. <laughs> No, dude, I do dude. like them NFT people though. Like, I don't know why. I, I follow a, c- a couple of them because I'm interested. <laughs> yeah. I find that really I interesting. Follow, I follow more of like the NFT memer guys, but um. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, to like lighten up your page because you know, like you know, they always come on. They, even but if, it's like, just something new. It's just it's different on the feed, isn't it? You're like, ooh. Yeah. Well, no, but you know, what's they're, going on they're, there? They're a special type of breed. I mean, like, you know, <laughs> yeah, definitely. They, they could be like minus 5% on the day, like on their entire portfolio, and they would still, you know, be, you know, willy nilly happy. And then you like go yeah, to yeah. like, then you go to the FinTwit that like we like in air, air quotes grew up on, uh, yeah, like yeah. Last two, three years in, in FinTwit. And it's like, yo, if there's a minus 5% day on SPY, God, for, God willing, that doesn't happen. Uh, dude, we would be like killing each other. Like, there would be like a fight break. Do you know one on. thing about the way FinTwit? was back then and it is now i think it's better because a lot of the people that were calling calling stocks calling to trade you know their trades and everything they're not here anymore they're not relevant and now you have the real people that got in and were being mentored that had to go away and and start learning for themselves really because either they were losing money or they weren't making enough money 
and they had to develop their own strategy, you know. So now you know. have like these young people like yourself coming out of college, put a bit of money in, and now you're like, okay, this is going to be my strategy going forward. I'm going to try to pass out the knowledge on to people that, you know, join my space or Discord or whatever, you know what I mean? No, exactly. But it's the best but time. It's like, Back in 2020, there were very, very few people who actually traded to the downside. So when everybody was up, the whole market was green. And when everybody was down, everybody was down because nobody was trading to the downside for the most part. I mean, you know, it's at least the people that I was following back then, everybody was trading the same type of stuff where it was, you know, penny stocks. No one's, you know, naked shorting penny stocks. I love I love a good penny, penny stock. Yeah. Man. Oh, so, I mean, it, it's definitely evolved in a way where now I think people are mm. understanding of your ability to make money on the downside, upside, whatever. And if you did not learn how to make money on the downside, you know, all of last year, uh, you probably had a really rough year. You know, even people who did play the downside still got ripped on some of these, uh, you know, bear market rallies that we saw. Well, um, did, have you heard the quote that the night over 90 percent of uh, daily day traders, you know, especially new ones or ones that are trying to learn? actually lose money and there's a reason for it they oh. they want money now they want quick money and they're not willing to put in the time to learn they're not willing to put in the time to read a book they're not willing to follow people like yourself other people in the finchwit space or whatever and invest in their knowledge and learn from them this is why they lose money oh you're spot on with that man and any, yeah. anybody down below, if you guys have any questions or anything, feel free to come up. I mean, you know, I kind of just, you know, we usually do these where we sit down, just, uh, you know, see what we got for the next day coming forward. And obviously, you know, we're heading into a bigger week. So uh, I figured, you know what, let's move it on over to Twitter. I posted all the charts anyways that I was going to talk about. So at least we got, a, you know, something up top that we could take a look at that way. But, um, yeah, no. Man. So you said there's a couple of uh... – there's a couple of uh, earnings you, you were mentioning them. Yeah. Uh, so, you want to know what you looking at, like looking at Wednesday, see what the they've got to say on Wednesday. Yeah. To be honest, I mean, it's, it's always tough. And again, that's why mm. I'm really not swing trading. And honestly, weeks like this, uh, a lot of good traders that I personally learned from, they just stay away. Like they, they don't, uh, they don't mess with weeks with big earnings like this uh, or economic yeah. data when, it just seems like every time economic data comes out, it shifts the the whole course of where we're going over the next. Yeah, it shakes up. Yeah, I uh, think um, you know, like you've seen Tesla like obviously fly for a, for a, what was it five days in a row? Yep. I think you're gonna have a little rug pull on Wednesday. I think so, not everything's gonna be all gravy. You know, you're gonna have so a small. Have a I small read. I, I read an article in Twitter. Whenever I clicked out of it to to, I was gonna retweet it. Hit Twitter refresh and it was gone. I couldn't find it, but they had billions and billions that magically inflowed into uh, Apple and Amazon and one other company. So I don't, I don't, I don't think unless Powell is a super hawkish, you know, like he plans on crushing the market. I don't think we go anywhere. I think they burn everybody playing FOMC. And uh, we wait on earnings. That's just that's kind of what I kind of what I see. Yeah, very possible. Yeah, I mean, we do have some big ones Tuesday. Did you watch the the, guys? Did you watch the uh, documentary on Bernie Madoff? No, I haven't watched it yet. Oh, you have to watch it, dude, because this guy was part of the SEC. He was part of. He had his hand in FINRA as well. Obviously, it was a big Ponzi scheme at the end. It was like sixty-seven billion, and they they suspect it was more than that. Big Ponzi scheme. He yeah. had like uh, he had the real trading business at the top of the the tower he had, and then underneath he had this something called the seventeenth floor. His sons weren't even allowed in there, and his sons worked for him. And it was just like fake um, trading, you know. They 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 they, they never traded. They, they just said to the people, yeah, his, you know, if people wanted to take some money out, they let them take it out. But they always had to cover it up, you know. Yeah. It's crazy. And oh. that's nothing. This is, I reckon there's bigger bigger fish to fry in the, in, in the market. You see all this money flooding in? Where's it coming from? I mean, yeah. people, 
People well, like Bernie. <laughs> well, you know what Bernie Madoff, he screwed over my Mets. The Mets ownership group, they they were investing with Madoff. They lost a shit ton of money. So I'm a little scarred on watching that just based on the, Oof, yeah. the pain that I already had to deal with for, you know, 10 years because they couldn't put their hands in their pockets. And It's and- such an eye-opener, though. Of it, but yeah, no, I mean, that's on the largest scale. Think about, I mean, even when people like Gloria, that was just one person, he managed yeah. to fool people for like what 30 years, 40 years, right? And people glorify like Jordan Belfort and stuff like that. Like, dude, yeah, he gets that, on my tits, yeah, that dude screwed over people like us, like middle class Americans, bro. Like, that's who is getting you know, screwed in, roped into his scheme. Like, yo, I don't, I don't personally think that's cool, but whatever, mm. I mean, it is what it is, you know. You know, people that I look at is like people like Michael Burry, who's um, he he done he he was um, uh, they had a movie called The Big Short on him, and it, he was how he 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 felt like the uh, the the housing crisis was coming about, and there was other other factors in place, and they made a movie about him, and it's such a good movie because it's about how he shorts the market, and he was putting in hundreds of millions, and he won out. Went out for all his investors, walked away. He's so funny, so interesting to follow on uh, Twitter as well. I know you see these come come and go all the time. I mean, we just recently had that other one that occurred. I don't even want to talk about, but um, Lion, I think you had a question uh, or something you had to bring up. Yeah, I was going to mention something. Yeah. So um, I was having some beers with a neighbor of mine, and he was telling me. You know, he was trading in the bull market and he was just investing, you know, buying random stocks. And the next day he would open up his account and he'd be up like 20% on his portfolio. It was stupid. And, you know, it just goes to show you how different it is investing in a bull market versus a bear market like we're in. You know, you have to be strategic in this kind of market. But, you know, just like the bull market, things are seemingly always going up with a few pullbacks. I mean, as long as you look at the overall trend, like, you know, in this market, if you're not watching the SPY, the S&P, you know, the dollar, when you're buying a stock – other than one of those, chances are you're going to lose. If you watch the trend, you know, you can kind of see, okay, my XYZ random ticker is going to go down because SPY is going down, you know, and just seeing that overall trend, you can actually profit in the bear market when everyone else is losing on their long-term portfolios. That's basically no. When I when I tell you, I'm not even it, no funny stuff. In 2020, everything that I bought when I first really started to deploy some capital, everything went up. So it was easy, and I didn't really know as much as you know I probably should have. But it was it was quote unquote easy, man. I mean, things were just going up. So it's like oh, you know, one down day, you're like whatever, it's gonna go up tomorrow. And nine times out of ten, you're probably right. I mean, I think that was really kind of a bad time in a sense for people in that, like, if you didn't expand on your knowledge during that easy time, now we're trading on, like, Hall of Fame mode if you're talking, like, NBA 2K or something like that. I mean, this is definitely not easy. Uh, although over the last couple of weeks, I do feel like it has been a little bit easier. But um, sure. no, I mean, it's just very market sensitive right now where anything, you know, that comes across on CNBC, a Jim Cramer tweet, that shit moves markets. And that is crazy to me, you know? Always bet against Jim Cramer. Yeah. Inverse Jim Cramer. Absolutely. 100%. But anyway. Yeah, you should, you should follow their account on Twitter. It's so funny. (laughs) Hey, how many, how many people uh, inversed uh, Meta? Got burnt. That's very true. When was that? That was two days ago. He said something about Meta. Yeah, he just tweeted by Meta. Oh boy! Yeah. Well, they oh shit. Yeah. So we'll see how that goes. But anyways, I just want to throw these out there right now. Um, just ones that I'm at least kind of keeping a keeping an eye on. Not that I I'm gonna play them. I used to play like you know two or three a quarter. I'm done with it. There's no need for me to do that anymore. Um, but we got Exxon Mobil Tuesday pre market. 
Pfizer as well on Tuesday morning. Um, and then after hours, AMD on Tuesday. Um, and I have a long-term position in AMD, so I'm, I'm going to be watching that one for sure. Um, what, then, what, what did I do? AMD with the semiconductor chips. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I'm, I, 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 I don't know. I always like try to extrapolate and think more than what they're like talking about right now. But like when you talk about like, you know, the robot future and everything, I think AMD has got a place. So I like AMD for that, for that sense, um, with the semis and everything like that. But, um, Anyways, yeah, and then we got After Hours Wednesday, we have Meta, another company that I like long-term, but I, to me, it's not anywhere close to where it needs to be. I like them solely on the fact that they're actually considering innovation, whereas companies like Apple and, uh, you know, I, I, Microsoft is making moves as well with that chat GPT stuff, but Apple, I feel like they're kind of just stuck in the mud right now in terms of innovation. Every year, we're getting the same, uh, maybe a little different, but you're getting the same-looking iPhone, you're getting the same-looking laptop, uh, you know, I feel like they're kind of just chopping around right now. You know, with their investment in uh, Chat GPT, is it is it are they going to have sole um, uh, use of it? I'm not totally sure. It's a, it was a couple of billion dollar yeah, investment, billion dollars in whatever. Ten billion dollars, yeah. Yeah, I mean that's that's because they they said they want to implement it into Bing Search, and I'm like, who the fuck uses Bing Search? Like, well, yeah, they're going to try and compete. Yeah, Bing. I remember that kind of thing. <laughs> the day it used to come up, I'm like, "What the hell is this shit?" And I had to like go back into <laughs> back to Google, you know. It, it is actually funny. <laughs> you go back to Google and say, "What is Bing?" Question <laughs> mark. <laughs> it, it, no, it's funny that the same the same week that uh, Microsoft says that they're trying to you know re up their investment into Bing to trying to kind of compete with Google. Google gets the lawsuit from the government saying that they have a monopoly over the internet because of uh, Google Chrome. So it's just kind of like great timing. <laughs> Well, they had that Activision and stuff dropped, right, KD? So Microsoft is gonna be booming in gaming, huh? Uh, yeah, I, I still don't, I still haven't confirmed that though. Um, to the best of my knowledge, yeah, somebody dropped in my DMs that uh that the Microsoft uh, law, uh lawsuit from the government, you know, blocking the Activision uh acquisition uh was uh, revoked. I haven't looked at it further though. Damn. Yeah. Well, anyways, I mean, after hours Thursday, Amazon, Apple, and Google. Um, yeah, so that that's going to be an interesting day for sure. Um, Friday, not so much. Uh, I mean, there are companies, but nothing that's really sparking my interest. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's gonna, I it's gonna be a hectic week. I I'm looking at it from the perspective of keep them keep those stop losses tight and keep the trades short. Um, usually, how I like to go into that. Um, you know, on, on a, uh, like, you know, looking into the week ahead, but, um, also, I mean, not only do we have that Powell stuff on Wednesday, we got Friday, that non-farm payrolls that always seems to be a wicked market mover. Um, that's coming out Friday morning pre-market. So just a, a lot of stuff going on. And again, like I said before, we are very like word intensive in the market right now where, uh, a headline comes across on CNBC or, you know, so and so dropped something on Twitter that, you know, came across their uh, Bloomberg terminal. Like the market reacts to that very quickly and your setups can get busted just as quick. So, um, you know, having a plan. You say Bloomberg terminal. Yeah, yeah. You know, somebody having that, they'll be posting that. I think they, it doesn't it cost like a hundred thousand pounds a user. Oh, yeah. It's big. Dollars. I, I don't even know. I've never even looked at it. It's definitely not. Uh, something I've always wanted to get my my hands on it. I'm just like, what have they got? There? Obviously, they got more information. That makes sense than the market. But they can use that to their advantage, right? They can just. Oh, geez. And that's why, like, you know what? At the end of the day, like you have all these hedge funds institutions. They have every resource in the book. Yeah. With, uh, you know, uh, a Bloomberg terminal. They have people literally paid hundreds of thousands of dollars to be doing research and all this crap. And, you know. Yeah. Like fighting solely their job to do that, you know. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, hey, on, on Bloomberg, yeah. on Bloomberg, like on the FOMCs, uh, people that do have it, they have the the live this audio. Then you know they have the live event. The live audio is twenty seconds faster than the live event. Wow. Oh, so they're ahead of the market, like right. Yeah. But it's interesting, even even with information that comes out, it's not always necessarily going to go the way that you believe it's going to go. I mean, that we see that all the time, you know. Mm. but uh 
Yeah, I mean, anyways, I, I'm going to throw up some of my charts that I got um, heading into the week and, you know, kind of just see where we're at. Um, hold on. I Mando, pulled... Yeah, what's up? Can you tell us a little bit how you come up with those levels on, like, SPX and SPY, like, just sure. kind of your thought process and where that comes from? Yeah, absolutely. So, I got, I mean, you know, I'm, it's not like I created this method by any means. And for anybody that would be interested in learning how I, you know, get my levels and everything like that, literally just type in ICT onto uh, YouTube. This guy, um, he's pretty incredible. Um, you know, I, I, again, I've had success in the market over the last couple of years since I've really been diving into it. But I would always go through that, you know, that stretch where, you know, you'd have a day that's just wicked make a ton of money and then over the the next couple of days you kind of give quite a bit of it back and that's something that going into this year my whole you know mindset was about discipline and we talked about this in the group quite a bit like this year i'm going to be much more disciplined not only in trading but just in life in general i'm going to be going to the gym i'm going to stop drinking freaking energy drinks every day in my life i'm going to set more parameters for my life so that when it does translate into trading it's going to be more beneficial to me because I, I would consider myself like a freaking gunslinger, man. I would go in, I would make a crazy big gain on a trade and then just, you know, slowly watch it bleed out here a little bit, little bit, little bit. Um, and I ain't doing that anymore. And already just in one month this year, I mean, we've, we've been in the group talking about it. Like um, my, my bread days, you know, so far this year uh, since January started, I've had three red days and I've kept those very, very minimal. I had one on Monday that was my biggest of the year, and it was nothing near what a red day would look like for me in 2022. Um, so just just having these levels, and this is where it all ties in together, it's giving more of a structured game plan in terms of, um, you know, not only, you know, your targets to the upside, but also an escape plan if shit does not go your way, because that happens way too often, where... Um, you get into a trade and you have a level here and it slips that level, but then you say, Oh, I have another support level right here. You know, uh, let, let's see if it bounces off that level. And then it chops around there for a little bit. And then you get your hopes up. You're already read on your contract and then you get another knife down, but you have another, uh, support level there. I call that quicksand. That's when you just keep getting dragged under, dragged under, dragged under, hoping that you're going to get the bounce that seemingly never comes. So for me, I know I can make that money back quickly um on a trade that does go my way so my levels the way that i have them structured is really just um you know under a certain point i'm out and i try to enter as close to that point as possible that way even you know i don't have a specific you know stop loss percentage it's just what i'm seeing on the chart um but to get into how i'm kind of making them and creating them i can get into that right now so i'm going to pull up my chart here and what I'll do is I'll post one of my charts so you can kind of see as best as you can. I wish I could screen share on here, but I can't. Let me do this. All right. So, for instance, here I have SPY uh, right up at the top in the nest. Um, essentially, all I'm doing, and, you know, this can come from many different time frames. One that I found success on recently has been the 30-minute time frame. And... On that 30 minute time frame, I'm looking for large imbalances, whether it's to the upside or to the downside. And what I mean by that is, you know, when you see those, um, you know, everybody off into it likes to call them the boner candle or the knife, right? So what I'm doing off of those candles is I'm seeing the imbalance and the imbalance is the point of those candles that are untouched. So if you look at the image above, you'll see on SPY, um, Let's see. So I wish I could screen share. This is a pain in the ass. So right where that green box right in the middle starts up to that 405.61 level, you could see that in between the one up candle following that down candle, there we have another strong uplifting green candle into another more of an indecisive candle, like the uh, little green body candle right there. So what I'm doing is I'm using those imbalances as my levels of support and or bounce spots, right? So the reason for that is because inside there, no wick had ever come inside that level, right? Um, and in between, we can assume that that was 
strong buying pressure more to the bullish upside rather than uh, when you get two long wicks that completely cover a body. That's just going to leave um, everything is balanced in that area in terms of price. But when you get those imbalances that are huge like that, you'll see that um, you know they, they often act as bounce levels. So if you scroll over down to the bottom left where we created a gap on SPY and to go off a little bit, but when you talk, talk about um, overall charting and where I'm getting my levels, I always speak in terms of ES or MES, and those are the futures. And the reason why I look at the futures charts rather than looking at SPY or SPX, you know, what I actually trade, they're going to move the same. But the difference is on MES, ES, you're only getting a one hour window during the week because it trades 23 hours, five days a week. You're only getting a one hour window where you're going to get gaps created, right? I don't like gaps um, personally. I mean, you, you hear it all the time on Twitter. Oh, it's, it's into a gap. It's going to fill. Well, no, not necessarily. We've seen it a hundred times. Sometimes they just draw, they, they slap down a, whether it's a dark pool print or a huge order block right at the top of that, um, that gap. And, uh, and it, it, it's not a smooth rip right through the gap. So I like to chart on ES or MES because in times where gaps are being created on SPY or SPX, you're actually getting the full story on charting futures. You know, there are many key levels that are created in the overnight session that many people don't even see because they're looking at a gap. So that's why I like to use that rather than, um, you know. Uh, just spy or SPX. But anyways, you could see that it created that little gap up and you know, that's, that would be considered an imbalance. We dropped back into the imbalance and we took off from there. Um, so when that price gets balanced, oftentimes you'll see a bounce. Now, does it always happen? Of course not. No indicators a hundred percent because if it was, then please send it to me because I would love to use it. But you have an escape plan. If we're going to break below that green box right there, I'm out of there, right? And I'm going to try and add as close as I can to the bottom of that so that my loss, it, it's not substantial, right? So if I can keep my losses small with increased upside potential, I'm going to take that all day, every day. So going back to what Lion said in terms of me doing that, um, you know, and, you know, I've been doing it in the group a lot where I'm throwing out a number and that number, you know, oftentimes tends to act as a magnet to for price um that's just an imbalance that the market or the market algorithm is pushing it towards um so you see like you know two days ago we had that 40 70 that was a total pain in the ass we couldn't break that that was just a brick wall so having that in the back of my mind i know hey if i can if i could snag a put right here off this large imbalance i can ride that down a little bit even if it's only to the bottom of um, the imbalance shown, that's still some good coin, right? Um, I, I, I refrain from hitting that big homer nowadays where your singles, you know, those little, you know, whatever gains they are, you know, you add them up over, you know, even just a week, then you could start, you know, you gain some speed, those singles become doubles, you know, when you have maybe add one more contract um, you, with the ability to add one more contract, maybe you say to yourself, and I do think it has more upside. I have a level up here. You're going to feel more comfortable letting one ride when, you know, you're already secured some profits on the way up. So that's ultimately, um, you know, when I'm talking about the levels or the, the specific spot prices, that's solely just me just finding imbalances on the chart. And it's, it's not very difficult, but I think, it definitely takes time to understand how price is going to react within said um, imbalance. The more times you get into that imbalance, the more it gets filled and you, then you can see it move through it much, much easier. So, um, so I know that was long winded, but line, does that, does that help? No, you? That's really interesting, man. Yeah. So, um, you know, people using technicals, um, you know, whatever it may be, let me tell you, I have tried everything in the book and and you say that you know they're profitable strategies 100 percent. i know a ton of people who make money using 
technicals. I know, you know, people making money off of options flow, dark pool, uh, you know, order flow, volume price, whatever it may be. You can totally make money off of that. I'm just saying just from my experience, this is giving me that extra layer of structure that I needed as a person because for me, I, I again, I was gunslinging it, man. I would have crazy days and uh, then I would also have, you know, crazy bad days. So um, that's my mission. I gave back too much money that I made in the market last year and I ain't letting it happen again. And I think just it was. Yeah, hell no. <laughs> I'm, I'm all, all I trade. If you know, if we go into my, uh, you yeah. know, my, my statements and everything, I think I've traded four tickers this year. SPX is the one that I trade every day, and that's pretty much all I'm trading. I think I've had a couple spy trades where if I'm up solid on a day or down pretty bad on a day, I'll step away from SPX because it is uh, a little more uh, intense, and I'll trade spy. Um, Nvidia, I took one trade on Nvidia, and I took a boil swing and stupid me it didn't work out i thought we bought them on boil and we didn't um and i lost on it but other than that man i keep it as simple as possible and you could do all these same you know methods and everything like that you could do it with whatever ticker you want again you know they're gonna there's gonna be gaps and stuff like that you have to account for but um you know with with es and futures and i have a futures account i don't use it as much but um, I'm still doing all my charting on there. It's going to move the same. Uh, I wish the numbers were, um, I wish the numbers lined up perfectly to SPX. They don't. So, you know, I'll be saying a number, uh, I always got to make sure I put ES on it. And, you know, when I try and like, you know, track it back to SPX, it takes time and stuff like that. So it's annoying, but, um, you know, that's, that's ultimately like the game plan for me and that's what it's been. And I try to keep it as simple as possible. So, I find those big imbalances on the 30 and I like to drop it down into a five and a one minute chart. The one minute is the most, um, you know, spot on for me in terms of entries and exits, just because that algorithm that's controlling price, that's, it's operating on a, a very low time frame. It's not operating on a 30, you know, whatever, uh, you know, 45 minute, four hour is it's operating on a very small time frame. So, um, I, that, I have a question for you. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, are you talking options here? I'm, I'm, I'm asking because uh, I'm not familiar with. Uh, yeah, no, I'm just you know, talking spot. About yeah, man, I'm I'm talking overall charting, but of course you can play options. Yeah. This, I mean, that's all I play at this point. Um, yeah. So what? What? This is what I've been trying to like establish and learn. I, like, I, I don't know too much about options. I'm just gonna put it out there. Yeah, no, it's all good. Um, what, what, what is it you're looking for? So when you find it, when you see a contract or you see like a call or a put, what, what is it that you're looking for? Like in terms of like the, do you, do you look at the volatility, volatility, sorry. Yeah, no. Uh, and this comes like, with, experience. what is it you're looking at? This comes with experience for sure, but yeah, uh, yeah. you'll see on days with big data uh, drops or, you know, even if we're talking about just an individual stock, like you'll see, um, you know, certain days, whether it has earnings or a news drop or, you know, Lucid, for example, yesterday, I bet you that IV was crazy. So when the IV on these co uh, contracts of, you know, say, uh, you know, individual equities, when they're above like 100, I, I try to avoid them. I mean, or I used to try to avoid them. I don't trade them at all anymore, to be honest. I'm strictly, you know, focused on the S. Wasn't it running into the thousands yesterday? I was in a space yeah. and they were like, shit, it's up. Like, it's gone up again. And I was like, oh, yeah. I, do I kind of understand what they're saying, but I don't. <laughs> you know? Right. Yeah. The contracts ran like some 60,000% yesterday, which, yo, honestly, if I'm going to be uh, straight with you guys, that absolutely pissed me off. And it didn't piss, me, because, you know, it didn't piss me off because I wasn't in it. It didn't piss me off because uh, the people that made money that uh, like you know actually got into trade stuff. I was mad because like you know people were playing Lucid as a sympathy to Tesla running up, and then like Lucid you know to, of course on the day that everything's green decides like yo let's drop this you know perfectly you know time news right now so that everybody will you know come flood and buy our stock, and then uh, obviously come some, everyone comes running in you know price you know skyrockets to the moon. I mean, like, Mando, I'm not going to share, you know, that story you shared with us, but, you know, there's that you know, incident you were telling them about yesterday, which, you know, I was like, are you serious? 
but like yeah i mean because it's like when you look at when you look at lucid like you know i like to you know look at fundamentals i like to look at technicals i like to try to be as well-rounded when i'm making trades uh looking into investments etc like honestly like we thought we, we talked about it on clubhouse yesterday like we don't discredit that lucid long term is going to be a great uh company it is going to succeed they're not the saudis are not going to let uh, lucid fail but there's no denying that the market cap for lucid absolutely is dog shit absolute dog shit i mean you're mm-hmm. talking about you're talking about a 28 billion dollar company that barely scratches the surface on you know let uh sales let alone like actually you know getting to a profitable zone and i'm like dude what the fuck like even fundamentally too it's like you know everything about that company is is has a flaw to it like the fact that you know when you're talking about you know building a company in saudi arabia you're talking about like importing rubber you're talking about like importing lithium and then like dude there's th- these things like come with expenses and it goes to say that like long term the, Sa- the saudis are not going to let this opportunity slip from them but like there's a lot of things between then and now and the fact that that news popped off lucid as much as it did i was like dang that's insane i wanted to get on the flip side i didn't i missed it but uh yeah that's my little spiel there yeah no it's sexy car though can't deny that it's better it looks much nicer than tesla <laughs> i mean but anyways i mean you get you get these like crazy like ivs and everything like that those are contracts i yeah. tend because those are the ones that get crushed um, as you approach expiration. Didn't it go up to eighteen and then drop to like twelve, twelve oh, nice now. Yeah, yeah. yeah started at ten sixty five, went up to eighteen fifty. Yo, I totally just is that just people taking? That's just people taking profit, right? That's just pure like a day people day trading, right? Yeah, you could. I mean, so I had a buddy who played it and he made a, a ton of money on Lucid yesterday. Um, and you know, he wasn't one who really, you know, is like so super in tune with like options and how they work and everything like that. And, you know, he, 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 he uh, yeah, let's go. <laughs> firing on. Hey, I want to call, I want to comment on the, on the options. So uh, my deal, I tracked small caps for a year. I tracked a couple patterns through the 2020, 2021. Then I jumped in and market went to crap. So none of that worked. And I jumped into options. I, I know about volatility. Other than that, I know absolutely nothing about options. <clears throat> I just play, I day trade them. I don't swing. I, I mean, I'll hold overnight sometimes, but I don't, I don't know the Greeks. I can't tell you the Greeks. I know that on I, SPX, I trade it because uh, of tax purposes. You get a, spe- you get in a special tax bracket and get pay less taxes with SPX. But they're just patterns, and I like to stay in between the two and the uh, four dollar and fifty contracts. Besides, at the end of the day, I'll get into the dollars because they will. How, how much do you have to have in? Are you literally buying them for that that amount, or do you have to have a certain amount of funds in into your account? Yeah, I mean, uh, yesterday uh, I was I was going to buy a ten dollar contract on SPX. And that's way, way, way out of the money. And it was their put a call. I'm a bear. I and I can't buy calls for some reason. Like even though I can, I can talk, <laughs> yeah. talk. I could talk through you to wide along and 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 walk you through the steps and where to get out. But I can't buy the call. So I bought a put, and the call I was going to buy was ten. The put was ten, and the call went to over a dollar. So I mean, you you everybody could talk about the Greeks and how you have to know them. You're not a trader if you, if you don't know them, but I mean, honestly, uh, I, I have a small account. I post all the time and I, I hit a thousand percent in between a couple days and two weeks and I reset it back. I I've gone from a hundred to a thousand and in five days. It's just, I don't know. You don't, you, I don't think you have to really know everything about options to really play yeah, you don't you, like you don't it's experience that. though like spy spy you have to be a lot closer uh you can't buy a ten dollar spy contract in my opinion and exactly and go to 90 timmy just to expand off what you're saying like that that's from experience like you know i do i know the greeks i i understand them and stuff like that but when i tell you like when i'm trading yeah do, I, do tell us about the greeks yeah no i i don't i don't personally like obsess over the greeks because just based on me trading SPX for so long now, 
I have a good understanding of how those contracts are going to move um, without even having to look at them. And essentially what it is, and in the shortest, sweetest way possible, if you look at Delta, which is one of the Greeks, Delta is your uh, per dollar change in contract price. So if you have a 50 Delta and this, you know you have, I don't know, what whatever stock you want to look at, let's say it's 15 bucks. If you have a 50 Delta on a $15 uh, stock, the stock goes to $16, you are making $50 on that contract. Um, so essentially, for every dollar move, your probability um, of that ending up in the money is, say, 50. And that's why you're getting $50 per contract. Now, if you slide it over to the next one, which is Gamma. So Gamma is an add-on to, um, to your Delta. So let's say you have a 50 Delta and your Gamma is... Five, five cents, right? You move up that one dollar, you are now getting that five cent gamma added to your delta. So now you're up at 16, you already made 50 bucks. If you were to go to 17, um, you're now making $55 per dollar increase. So the gamma is going to add after the dollar move. Um, lastly, I mean, there there's others that honestly, I, I don't even look at ever. Um, the last one that everybody should kind of have an idea of is theta and theta again, you know, it's, it's a, it's a nice term to use, but, uh, again, like Timmy said, like he knows if he's playing zero days and he's sitting in the contract for a while, that contract's going to melt. Um, but theta is your, your time decay. So if you have, uh, you know, I I don't know, we, let's say we, we were on lucid. So let's say lucid didn't go bananas yesterday. Lucid's at $12. And uh, the theta on that contract is 50, right? So for each day you get closer to being uh, to your expiration date, you're losing $50 on that contract when you wake up. So your time decay is going to eat you up um, just based on your probability of that contract entering the money or being, you know, uh, that won't that won't mean you owe now fifty dollars. It just means that you've lost. No, that. yeah, right. So yeah. options with options, and this is why, um, you know, when everything started to go down, I think a lot of people gravitated toward options was because you you have a determined risk when you enter that trade. So say your contract is one hundred dollars, right? One point zero zero. You'll see it on there. So that contract is one hundred dollars. You're not losing more than a hundred dollars. Well, maybe with the fee, you know, whatever the fee is, a dollar, whatever. But a hundred dollars, that's your max loss. So let's say you have a put on Lucid for ten dollars that expires on Friday, um, and Lucid just goes crazy like it did yesterday, your contract's going to zero and that's it. You're not going into your margin, you're not going into the account. It's dead. The contract's done, back to zero. But there is infinite upside. Now that doesn't mean that it's always it's gonna happen that way, but if Lucid squeezes to $100 and you have a $10 call, you're going to be $90 in the money and you're going to make a shitload of money on that contract. Um, so so how, how much would you have in your margin account to start playing these I, contracts? Yeah, I don't even have a margin account. This is actually good. Oh. Cash. This too. Cash, yeah. cash, cash, cash account. account. Cash account because, one, for me, I keep – five thousand dollars in my cash account that is it if i'm trading more than five thousand dollars a day uh i'm probably getting greedy uh or i'm having a really shit day and i'm gonna give back some so i keep my account very low i don't you don't need these big accounts and i'm also one to not try and make 30k in a day like for me if i can make you know a a set number at the end of each week i'm more than happy doing that um i'm not trying to be a hero here if you you lose out on them puts are you losing? You're losing real money, right? So you're 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 gonna. Yeah, this is real money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But again, like you have a. But are you just you are you just losing the contracts, the value of the contract, yeah, or are you just you're not going to be able to sell that contract? So if you're on the right, wrong... so just because it just expires and you you get yeah, no money, right? Worthless. Yep. So if you're in the money at expiration, your contract's worthless, and whatever you put up for that contract, it's you're going to zero interesting so that's the same thing like let's say you have a call option um you know whatever it may be say it's 150 dollars, and the stock tanks you know the the actual price of it we're not talking options price we're talking lucid's at ten dollars you buy an eleven dollar call for a hundred bucks 
and Lucid gets absolutely murked, goes to four dollars. Your contract is zero because yeah, but you now don't you don't owe money on it. It's just no. uh, that the contract's literally yep worthless. Right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're not gonna go in in the uh, you know. So it's a kind of a win-win, really, isn't it? You're gonna get some right, and you're gonna get some wrong, and yeah, it's, it's a, it's a it, you it, learn from each one, right? Yeah. No, they they move quick. Yeah. Move quick. Uh, in terms, and also there's a clock on it. You know, you have a shot clock where you have to buy a specific date for your contract. Whereas if you're just holding shares, you can hang on to that forever if you want, right? Um, Katie, you have something to add? Yeah, did you get a chance to talk to Ryan last night uh, after market? Fell? I did. No. All right. So, dude, uh, you you just had gotten off of uh, club, and mm-hmm. uh, and <laughs> dude, we were looking at it, and I was like, "Yo, you know what?" I was looking at with uh, SPX with Ryan. You guys look at ES. I I, I follow uh, SPX. I, I more tend to lean towards uh, SPX and, and Spy, just because I have on both of those charts. I have pivot levels. On those pivot levels. Oh no! Look, Ryan just you know popped in the audience. Literally, we were, as we we're talking about him. Um, but uh, yeah, no, we, we I look at pivot levels. I look at you know I look at areas where uh, price tends to get a little sticky, uh, and and that's where you know uh, you know you have to start to see like uh, if we break out from that level, uh, we usually you know move to the next. Uh, we move to the next pivot level. We like to test those back and, and et cetera, go forward. You know, it was getting towards close <laughs> and I was like, yo, let me, let me look, you know, let me look at our most recent, um, you know, pivot level I have. And so, like, you know, it's a pivot level we've been talking about all week long, uh, that 40, 70 level on SPX. And we were trading about like 40, 90, 40, 92. And I was like, dang, dude, it'd be nice if we got like a nice little pullback to 40, 70. I tried failing for a 40, uh, 40, 70, uh, Z, uh, Cobra. <laughs> and uh the i didn't get my fill i missed out on the the fill and uh we watched that you know that uh fill go from like uh i think it was like 25 cents i was trying to fill like between 25 to 40 and uh it went all the way to oh man i think it i think it went as high as 210 but i know for a fact it went to at least a dollar 80 so it's just one of those things and that was like 10 minutes till bell so like or yeah, it's about 10, 15 minutes till bell. Uh, but yeah, that's a good example of like, you know, you've got a 6x return if you got in at like 30 cents. Uh, but obviously, you know, you're risking is the fact that if it does go to 4070 uh, by expiration, four o'clock, you know, your contract is 100% toast. Uh, but then it's one of those things where, you know, you have to, you have to hit them if you're going to take them uh, or you got to be willing to lose, you know, the money that you put behind it. So, you know, trading with, you know, profits that you made earlier in the week or earlier in the day uh, is just some considerations that you'd have to make there. Yeah, move quick. I, re- I, re- I recommend if you're going to trade options and you're new and you're going to trade SPY or SPX, do SPY and 100 bucks because if you can't grow $100, which at the, you know, if you have a $1,000 account or two or three or four, you can't buy one contract and start growing that, then your twenty five thousand dollars is not going to help you at all. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I hundred percent agree. Like honestly, I look at SPX as the liquid crack uh, version of Spy. Like if you can't if you can't manage risk well, like you should be playing Spy. Like SPX will chew you up, stomp you out, kill you, beat you up, and then it'll still try to take you out for a dinner. Like because it still wants to grab your money at the end of the day. So. Uh, yeah, it definitely. If you're getting, if you're trying to get into options, you're still learning options. Takes by, it moves a lot uh, slower. Uh, the contracts are better priced, if, you know, for smaller accounts. If you start off with SPX, get some uh, testosterone shots because it will, it will take your manhood quick. <laughs> yeah, it's like bull riding in a sense. Like jump on the bull and see how many times you can, you know, play until you get bucked off. But, but yeah, no options are. Um, for, especially for the scalpers, you could definitely make a lot of money. You could also lose a lot. So, the risk management, if you don't have it, uh, you know, get you into some trouble. Absolutely. But, um, if anybody's down below and you have anything you want to add or anything, are, feel you, are you are you you just losing the money you're putting in, right? So. Yeah, yeah. So you're you're never gonna go like you know if it's, negative. Say you pay a hundred dollars for a contract, 
your max loss is a hundred plus whatever fee. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. You know, by the contract, but yeah, no. So that's why, like, when when things started to go bad, um, you know, in two thousand twenty two. Um, if people were playing the downside. I mean, look, if if you went naked short where you're shorting shares, right? Um, and you got murked and things started to go on one of those bear market rallies, you know, you're underwater and you could owe more than what you have. So that's the danger in it. Whereas options is like goes against you and you don't have any risk management in place, you know, at least, you know, your max loss is going to be whatever you paid for that contract. Here, here's how fast it goes. So uh, I put out a I trade I use Spy to trade SPX, uh, and I post almost every day the levels. While hit yesterday I was at my level, and a seven whenever I'm down seven percent, I automatically start looking to get out because I know that I'm wrong and it's going against me. And uh, you can go from seven, se- you could you can start looking at seven percent, and by the time you hit that button, you you could be down. 20 30 35 percent and i mean in just in just seconds oh that's on zero dated and and if you have a a a shitty brokerage you can get where you enter a trade and you're already starting down you're like what the hell's going on you can get a just trash fill like robin hood robin hood gives you some real trash fills on there so you can actually enter a trade and you know start isn't it so ironic that they're called robin hood yeah, no, exactly. I mean, you know what? It is like... It, 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 I mean, I'm English, and he was from the UK. Right. <laughs> the, the whole yeah. folk story. And it just absolutely makes me livid that it's like... It's meant to be like this this guy that takes from the rich and gives to the poor, and it's Robin Hood's quite the opposite, you know? <laughs> it infuriates yeah. me. Absolutely. And it's just like, you know, it's the, you know, zero commission trading, blah, blah, blah. Like, that is, you know, attractive to the eye, but then you look at it like yeah, but there's many other tr- trade tr- places you can trade. Oh, look, I, I use one and you know, there's yeah. not an ad for them or anything, but I use tasty works. And honestly, I never have any complaints with my fills. Like if I'm putting, you know, specific price for it, I'm getting it at that price. Yeah. I got to pay a buck, whatever it is for, uh, you know, the commission and everything like that. I'm, I'm okay with that in terms of me getting in at a, a worse price, which is infringing on where I want to get out, you know, cause then it's yeah. like, you're, you're you're chasing for break even rather than chasing to make money i guess you know uh so yeah no it's uh different in that sense but hey i i used to use weeble i chart weeble and i used to use weeble and uh i got i started sizing up and uh one time i took uh 50 contracts and i mark i market order in uh uh like 15 at a time and then if I, <clears throat> but I was automatically down a thousand dollars or a uh, dollar a contract once I got filled and it never moved. Like I, it was just sitting there pretty much filled, should have been filling at the exact same price. And I was down, uh, five grand just, just at the start of it. So I, I moved my money out of Weeble. I know a lot of people love Weeble and they don't have that problem, but I don't know. I've, I've had that happen a few times with Weeble. Yeah, and that's another one. Weeble's one where they don't charge you uh, substantial fees for, you know, entering uh, trades and stuff like that. But, you know, it's a give and take. It's like, w- would you rather the price that you, you wanted to buy for it or to not pay, you know, the couple bucks in fees? I mean, I, I feel like, especially when you're going in with size like that, you're not paying five grand in fees. Like, that's a that's a slippery slope right there that you don't want to get into. But um, we have Futures Trader here. He wants to talk a little bit about futures. What's going on, man? Hey, guys. Can you hear me okay? Yes, you got it. Hey, guys. Um, so I know you guys are talking a lot about options. Um, and I follow along with you guys in the Discord doing options and stuff. Um, I mean, I've done it all. I've done commons. I've done options. I've done futures. And for me, personally, I really like the futures. Um, so if that's something that any of you guys are interested in, um, I'm happy to share a little bit more information about it. Uh, I find it to be a little bit easier than option because we're not dealing with the Greece. We're not dealing with the theta. We're not dealing with the gamma, the delta. Um, and we're not dealing with the IV crush. Um, you know, so I know exactly how much I'm going to be making off of every single point that I, you know, every single point that we're moving in, in a particular direction. 
Um, the other thing I like about it is it's a lot easier to, to manage risk on it. I can set a specific stop loss at a specific price, whereas with options, you can't do any kind of like trailing stop losses or anything like that. Um, you know, so if anybody's interested in knowing more about options, I'm happy to, sh- or I'm sorry, about futures, I'm happy to share more information about that. Um, the other nice thing about op- your, your futures is that your contract will never expire. Um, so if you happen to hold your contract and you want to hold it long term, you can. What will happen is every three months, your contracts roll over. Um, so that's another nice thing about, you know, futures versus playing options is you're not going to have to deal with the expiration. You're not competing against time as well. Um, me personally, I don't like to hold my futures long either. It's just like you guys do with your option. Um, so I'm pretty much playing it the same way that you guys are playing your options as well. Um, so I just, I don't know what experience any of you guys have had doing that. Yeah, no, it's funny. We just talked about this yesterday where it was like, um, we were talking like, imagine if you can enter and exit options trades using those futures principles where you're actually stopping at a price on the chart rather than the price of what, um, you know, the contract is telling you, um, we were just saying that yesterday because I do like trading the futures and there's a couple of them that allow you to directly incorporate them into trading view. So you could literally just on your screen, place your stop, take place your take profit, whatever. And um, yeah, it's super clean, man. Yeah, for sure. And the other thing I like using is I like using a bracket order. Um, So in other words, what happens is I I have a, a stop loss, but then I also have a target point, you know, based on what I'm doing with my level. Um, so, you know, if we're at like, you know, 4075 on SPI and I know I want to, I know it's going to run up to 4100, I can put a sell price at 4100, but I also can have a 10 point trailing stop loss in case something happens and we don't quite make it to 4100 and all of a sudden there's this big night that comes along. I'm out of the trade and it's stress free for me. I don't have to worry about it. So I've already put in my risk and I've already put in what I want as my reward and let the trade do its job. Yeah, I love those OCO orders. I use them all the time. Uh, the bracket orders is honestly one of the best things that, uh, you know, was developed for markets. You know, self, it's basically, you know, you get to self-contain your risk in the options contract. You know, you can only lose a maximum of your premium. But even that, right. you can also, yeah, set your stop losses in it. It's great. Right. So. Serious question on, on futures. And I don't know anything about futures. <laughs> Uh, if you hold a contract long enough, well, I, so I've heard they they will like if you bought gold, you know, gold futures. That sooner or later you actually buy that gold. Well, you're basically trading off of a commodity. Um, so I mean, one of the commodities we're trading off of is uh, you know, the index fund. Um, so like ES, we're we're trading off of S and P. Um, you can trade other commodities as well. I mean, there's you know futures. You can trade coffee, you can trade corn, you can trade oil, you can trade all of those things. Um, now, my recommendation is is that, you know, if you have a big loss, you, you know, the, the issue is with futures, you do need to have a margin contract, uh, margin account. Um, so the option with that is that the you can be margin called on that and, you know, the bank can call back that contract, especially if you're up, you know, you're down big on it. The, the bank is going to protect themselves when it comes to that. Um, so certainly, you know, that's why it's important to manage your risk and, you know, we're, 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 we're playing with the same volatility as, you know, as you guys play with option. It's just that it's a lot easier to, uh, you know, know how much we're going to be taking as far as loss or or profit. Yeah. So. No, I love it. Thanks for that insight, man. I, I I have a futures account. I don't touch it as much as I should. Mm -hmm. Um, I noticed that, you know, late at night or, you know, when the futures market opens up, I was taking trades and I, I just like always would get stopped out just because like overnight the volatility obviously is not uh, as good as it is intraday. And unless it's like a, you know, Chinese market open, London open, whatever you may, you know, whatever. Right. But the, the other nice thing about it is if there's news that happens after hours, we can we can play off of that volatility, um, you know, so if there's any kind of like geopolitical news, you know, war or um any any actions that happen um you know uh we can take advantage of that outside of market hours you know using futures 
the other thing is that, you know, uh, for those of you that might have full-time jobs that might not be able to pay attention to the market all day long, you can play futures in the, you know, in the late evenings and nighttime and early morning and, and, and then go about your day, you know. Yeah, no, absolutely, man. Sure. But yeah. um, if anybody down below, you got anything you want to add, just request the mic. I'll bring you up. Uh, anybody else up here, if you got anything, floor is yours. But probably start to wind down here. All right. All right. Well, thanks for joining, guys. Appreciate it. Um, we'll uh, we'll be popping back on here from time to time for sure. But uh, wanted to hop over. Oh, Lion, you got something? Sorry, I just saw you requested it. I'll add you up here. Oh, it's gone now. Are you up here now? All right. Well, anyways, guys, good talking to you as always. We'll uh, we'll catch up tomorrow night and. Me okay? Yeah, yeah, I hear you. What's up, buddy? So, uh, you might have already talked about this while I was off, but uh, what are you specifically looking at next week or Monday? Uh, it's one of those fed with uh, caution types of weeks. I'm just going to mute your mic. It was a little feedback, but tread with caution, of course. Um, so much data coming out, and with the earnings, honestly. I don't know if anybody other than people who work for the companies are going to tell you how they perform. So it's not going to be me to say it. I got no clue. Uh, another one of those weeks where I'm definitely not going to be holding a lot overnight, but, uh, but yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's going to be interesting. I, I do think there will be quite a bit of volatility. Um, and just to take a look at, you know, my, my daily chart, at least um, we actually grabbed some liquidity over that 4080 mark. And that's what, sent us down um you know common retail would believe that that would be a breakout when in fact it is not um another reason why i'm not big on technicals because how many times have you heard oh it's a a fake breakout well i I don't i don't like fake breakouts i mean if i'm planning my whole trade i'm risking good money on that to me uh i'm not a fan of a a fake breakout i would like to have some substance behind it. And essentially like what we did was we attacked a uh, previous high and above that, those people who shorted that high, they'll have their stop losses in that vicinity. So essentially what the market's doing is taking those stops just to send it back down. Um, so yeah, we reached over that on the daily. Um, we did create a bullish imbalance down to 4057. So in that area, that is a, a level for me that I would be looking for a potential bounce. Um, this would be our one, two, three, four, fourth test into a bearish imbalance that was formed on August 26th. So that was kind of the start of when J Powell went, went hawk. Um, there are a few more bearish imbalances above, but that is the most recent one that I'm going to continue to watch and obviously it's going to take some time it was a large one this one goes from 4142 all the way down to 4065 on es i'm talking um so big bearish imbalance um we have that level that i just mentioned at 4057 and below that we have 4039 that would be the bottom of that imbalance to get filled um following that we had um another one and this one's quite far away that we actually got into on Wednesday and bounced from uh, with that long wick that was at 3980 um, so that's another one that one has already been tried um, just from experience and watching oftentimes you know when it continues to keep getting tested that's not ideal um, they usually get broken down at that point but uh, we had the one test we have not tested this uh, 40 57 level so if we are to pull back down to there um that would be a place where i'm looking to you know potentially enter on a bounce play um but yeah no next layer of liquidity 
I have on the daily is 41.80 on ES. That was a, a long, long wick from December 13th. There was some sort of data that day, meaning that we, we ran up high up to 41.80 prior to closing the day, about 130 points lower from that high. Um, and that kind of set us on that downside path through Christmas and earlier on this year before we started to get some legs. But um, so, yeah, I, I posted that chart on Twitter too. If you want to take I a think look. that I think that was CPI. Yeah, it probably was CPI. I th- oh yeah, it was twelve thirty. Yeah, twelve thirteen. I think that was CPI. You're right, and it was a Tuesday. Yep, Tuesday. So um, yeah, no, those data points are wicked, man. I try to avoid them. I mean, if you're on the right side of them, great. But if you're not tough especially when you're trying to get out of them man when that when that's uh when those contracts are running against you it's it's tough to get a fill so but all right well that's all i got today guys uh we'll talk soon and um you know enjoy the weekend yeah y'all have a good one risk management yes sir